Hey lovelies, it's Lisa here and it is the 25th of June, which means it's day 25 of my tower month, which means we're almost done. And which means that astonishingly, we are halfway through the year. I don't know where uh, 2019 has gone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe that's the tower right there. Time passing, seeming like it does so just in a, in a blink. It's also really, I was thinking about this today, you know, Reader's Studio ended, was at the end of April. Northwest Tarot Symposium was at the beginning of March. Both of those tarot extravaganzas filled my heart with, you know, with glee at being among so many wonderful readers and practitioners, but also um, filled my hands with goodies. And I have kept meaning to share them with you, particularly the stuff I got at Reader's Studio. Um, and I just, I haven't done it. I mean, I've been doing other content. Um, I love me, I love me a good unboxing, first impressions video. Um, and, you know, it just isn't, that's not the content I tend to find myself filming usually. Um, even though I love viewing it and I enjoy making it. Um, but there are other things I, I guess I find myself wanting to say more. So, um, I guess I just wanted to say, you know, thank you so much to those of you who watch my channel. I don't ever take it for granted that that I have things to say and that there are some people who want to hear what I have to say and want to respond. And that's just gorgeous and amazing. And um, particularly as I, I touch into my, my towery vulnerability about this and putting myself out there to be seen. You know, it's always that leap forward or fall backward um, of putting, putting this content up. So I really appreciate that. And then I also realized that, you know, um, what I have to say, I mean, inevitably fall back, fall forward, you know, pitch yourself out of the tower and uh, there will be, there will be voices that do not agree. And there will be things that people do not appreciate. And you will, if you put yourself out there, you will fall flat on your face. Um, yeah, in that way, uh, I really am like Charlie Brown. Like I said in a few videos ago, you know, that sort of way that Charlie Brown just like keeps trying to kick that football and Lucy keeps pulling it away and he keeps falling on his face. You know, to put yourself out there is inevitably to fall on your face. Not always, but inevitably it will happen. Anyway, um, all of this about, you know, not having done the first impressions videos and the unboxing videos that I sort of thought I was going to do by now, all of this came to mind because there were two tarot decks that I picked up on the potlatch table at Reader's Studio. You know, that wonderful practice of like these swap tables, these potlatch tables, where uh, the encouragement is just to bring your generosity forward. Like you just get, I always want to like feed the table with as many good wonderful decks as I'm as I have that I'm willing to to let go of and that's always an interesting I sort of collect the decks that I, I I'm ready to let go of all year and then I bring them to to the you know to the symposium or um, now to reader studio and then and then the table you feed the table and the table gives you know and that oh the beautiful like give and take ebb and flow so two of the decks that I got on the potlatch table um were vintage decks and they're very similar in their feel. So um, just to give you a sense, so they both have bags now. Um, some of you know me and my bags. <laughs> so this is the Ace of Swords from Walter Wegmuller's 1982 um, Tarot of the New Age, Neuzeit Tarot. Um, kind of trippy, beautiful colors, sort of bubbly, smiley, very sort of 70s, 80s um, appeal in its artwork. And then this is um, the strength card. Whoops, sorry, it's upside down. From Eva Maria Nietzsche's um, Tarot of the Trance, 1998. Wegmuller's deck came out with AGM. Um, uh, Nietzsche's deck came out with US Games. But you know, sort of similar, like similar palettes and similar kind of fanciful artwork. The stance is really different between the two decks. Um, you know, and I'm, this isn't going to be a, an impressions video, although I really haven't worked with them. I just have them. Um, isn't going to be an impressions video. I just want to kind of 
show you. There's the tower. We'll come back to that. I just want to kind of show off the cards a little bit. Whoops. There's the Ace of Swords. I love that. Night and day. Um, Veg Miller apparently um, had some connection to Roma culture in his youth. And so the imagery with, you know, has these kind of more um, Crowley Harris kind of pippy, um, pippy pips, these non-scenic pips. Um, he's influenced, uh, he's, it's his own iconography. He, he sort of claims to be influenced by Roma kind of tarot, folklore, culture. Um, but, you know, he's his own guy. <laughs> And I mean, he's also inf influenced by Waite Smith images and, and iconography and meaning. Well, not so much the iconography, but the meaning. Um, and then just sort of, he's his own guy. This is new agey stuff. So, you know, I may do a video, a more deep video on this once I've actually really worked with the deck. Um, but, you know, it's kind of, it's just it's kind of delightful. Um, so that's Vegmilla. And then... Nietzsche's deck, the Terror of the Trance, you know, what um, what she says about this deck, um, and here's the Fool, just to, what she says about this deck is, the Terror of the Trance, um, the Terror of the Trance deck spirits the user away to the archetypal world of the soul, where there are many secrets to explore. The accompanying booklet delves into the spiritual background of the cards and open a, opens a direct path into the realm of the major arcana and minor arcana, this deck appeals not only to the intellect, but also guides readers in a greater comprehension of the figures of the tarot. The tarot of the trance should be seen as a medium through which users can communicate directly with their inner souls, inner selves, sorry. So, you know, trance in this sense for her, I think, is about kind of working with the imagery to kind of, you know, and all of the cards have this sort of framing around them as if we're looking into a mirror that's helping us into you know, into sort of some deep soul work, some deep exploration um, of our inner worlds. Um, I don't, to me, I don't see how this artwork would really enable that, but it's so pretty and plateful and interesting and weird. I mean, this is such a weird strength card, you know? Um, so it just, it just is its own, it's its own beast. And in that way, it's really like the, New Age Tarot. Anyway, um, and then, you know, it's just fun. Fun, fun, fun. So, um, Nietzsche and Wegmuller, and they're two different images of the tower. So this is Nietzsche's image of the tower, and this is Wegmuller's, which he calls Destruction. The German title of it is Der Zerstörung. Pardon my German accent. Right? two different versions. So what he says about this in the little white book is he basically says, um, and this is in French and I'm not, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read the French, but I'll sort of paraphrase it. Um, he says it's here that man strives to realize the impossible. And in doing so, he pulls those around him into the abyss. Um, you know, this is, uh, what else does he say? You know, he sort of pulls, this is where man's greed uh, and stupidity kind of comes into, into play. So it's kind of, it's, it's very much Tower of Babel, and he mentions the Tower of Babel. And if you see kind of the nuclear um, imagery, you know, it's like we reach, we try to realize what's impossible. We try to use our minds to create, and that's how we um, court our destruction, right? It's that sense of, overreaching. It really is sort of Tower of Babel imagery, pride, um, attempting to uh, make real uh, things that we are not really capable of. So it's man's greatness which then becomes his his destruction. Man's, my, man's ability to reach like toward God, man's, my, man's desire to be God, which then pulls him and his whole world down. And we just see this like huge, greedy maw, this ah, which reminds me of a kind of medieval depiction of the devil as, um, you know, the, the devil's uh, mouth and its belly 
which is often in tarot decks, or the depiction of hell as a gaping mouth that you see in sort of medieval iconography, the hell mouth. It's like this, <laughs> you know, I'm going to eat up everything. So our greed, right, leads to our destruction. The terror of the trance, on the other hand, has flowers. <laughs> the flames look like flowers, and which is also a very traditional kind of um, tower depiction. Um, the flames, you know, often look like flowers, as I've said in other videos. And here what uh, Eva Maria Nietzsche says is the tower symbolizes the destruction of old patterns and life circumstances of an outdated image of the self and the world. When we are afraid of necessary changes, we may experience this as a catastrophe, as a streak of bad luck. The tower is an image for rigid, hardened structures. We have walled ourselves in, leaving the undesirable things on the outside. Finally, the shadow strikes, the ivory tower collapses, and the self gains new freedom. The light of the tower stands for restructuring, crossing boundaries, a new beginning, and liberation from constricting situations in life. The shadow is rigid moral concepts, illusions, the fear of something new, and violent upheavals. So, you know, for, um, for Wegmuller, the problem is the way that we try to reach beyond what is right in front of us and we try to realize what is impossible and we try to make things. And in Nietzsche's reading, the tower is like the stuff we have made, right? Um, and the tower is about breaking loose of that rigid stuff. Wegmuller's almost like, you know, don't try to imagine it. Don't try to imagine it. Don't try to break free of what's already here. And Nietzsche's kind of like, yeah, break free, break free. But both cards are kind of taking for, for granted this fundamental way in which we humans try to create structure, right? We want to make things. We want to take our hearts and our wills and our minds and put them out there in material reality. And in fact, that sense is, you know, this is, dudes, this is the magician. This is like all about us trying to manifest, right? trying to make real what we desire. So here's the point, I think, you know, there's nothing wrong with manifesting. This is sort of like what I was saying last night, you know, um, our desire to create, to structure, to build, to take the un intangible aspects of our hearts and our minds and to see that realized in the world are the sides of ourselves that are most like God as imagined in, you know, traditional religions, God as creator, that God-like side of us, you know, it's not wrong, but it imprisons us. And yet those prisons always ultimately also collapse because we keep, we keep, we keep cha chafing against what is trying to create something new. And so there's this kind of almost like a cycle of respiration, this breathing in and breathing out that's a part of the way we humans work with what we assume to be intangible to make it real. Um, this may not be completely related, but I throw it out there um, because it's something that happened today. I was talking to a friend of mine who comes to my mindfulness group and is, you know, a very deep practitioner, has a very, very beautiful and solid meditation practice. And they were saying that, you know, whenever they encounter, um, whenever they encounter like the sense of spaciousness where it's just this opening of spirit in the middle of meditation, this kind of just expansiveness that can happen as we allow ourselves to settle, right? Whenever they experience that, that openness and spaciousness, they also immediately want to go, oh, openness, spaciousness, and they want to like hold on to it, you know? Like the minute you experience that expansion, it's like, oh, here's expansion. Let me, let me now hold on to my expansive quality of mind. And they were worried. They weren't really worried, but they're like, yeah, what do you do with that? And, you know, my thought is like, yeah, of course we expand and then we contract. You know, we, that's how it works. That's how it works. 
And there's nothing wrong with that because the minute we, we notice how that expansion has become kind of fixed and solid as we try to wrap our minds around it, try to fix it into a shape, the minute we notice that, we've now just expanded again. If we're honest with ourselves, honest with our hearts, honest in our practice, honest in our engagement and our intimacy with the world, then we're going to find that life itself is an endless cycle of building towers and towers toppling, of building towers and towers toppling. That's what it is to be the kind of creatures that we humans are, mortal and fragile and yet somehow also infinite in our spirit, infinite in our heart and mind. So, you know, we've got nuclear disaster and then we've got like pretty flowers <laughs> and happy faces. Like it's sort of those faces really happy. They're sort of happy, sad. Blossoming and belching fiery hell. This is the same tower, just from the different points of breathing out and breathing in, expansion, contraction. Okay, that's what I got. And uh, as always, I'm so grateful you're here and thank you so much for your practice.